morning crypto. Good morning, warriors. Hello and welcome back to another episode of your favorite crypto news channel, Good Morning Crypto, where we bring you the most relevant and impactful crypto-related topics from the top crypto research team in the world. I'm your host, Abs, joined by several of my friends this morning. We have the Node Defender. Mario is joining us. The funniest Italian in crypto, Mr. Johnny Crypto, is joining us on this Wednesday. And a very special guest is here, a bodybuilder known for his aggressively passive income, making gains pumping iron, and in the crypto market. Showtime 2KX is back on GMC this morning, so very excited to have all of you. Today on Good Morning Crypto, we will be discussing how the George Soros Fund is bullish on Ethereum, stating that Fidelity's 401k allocation is only the beginning for mass adoption. Janet Yellen is the latest financial leader to state that inflation is no longer transitory. We debate whether crypto can be a hedge against times in times of high inflation. Rich Dad Poor Dad author Robert Kinasake says a depression and hyperinflation are here, calling for dangerously low Bitcoin price targets, while JP Morgan is embracing the digital transformation of finance, stating this market is a marathon, not a sprint. And with the collapse of passive income opportunities, our special guest shares the projects that we believe have the greatest chance of succeeding during these uncertain times. Our show is available on your favorite podcast platforms like Spotify and Apple Music. And for those of you listening via podcast, our show is live on YouTube Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern at the 3T Warrior Academy channel. So Showtime, we typically start with our guests, but I'm looking at Johnny Crypto and I got some questions here. So Johnny Crypto, what are you wearing this morning? <laughs> well, well, obviously I'm not wearing the, this shirt for the Italian national team because they stink and they can't score. But if you want to score, now this man right here, Showtime, that man can score. If you're looking for passive income, you want to grow your portfolio account, that's the man you talk to. So I wore this beautiful thing for you, Showtime. I hope oh, you appreciate that, Showtime. Much love. Yeah, you know, Abs, you you are like a host, like a fine wine that gets better with age. Johnny Crypto, Mario, you guys, just you're always getting better. Johnny, much love, my brother. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us, Showtime. And I want to say hi to the No Defender, Mario. It's your first episode of the week. Super excited to have you. Always miss you. I tell Johnny Crypto, I always miss when the No Defender is not here. But we're very excited <laughs> to have you. How are you feeling on this Wednesday? I'm feeling amazing, man. I'm really excited to be here as well. It's, uh, you know, as as I don't do these as often, it certainly gives me a different feeling every time I come on and I'm just super excited in the in the day. Uh, Johnny, I'm sorry about your Italian jersey. You know, me being Portuguese, we do have like the best player in the world. And, you know, we are showing you Italians how to play soccer at the moment or football, as I like to call it. But yeah, man, sorry to hear. But I should have I should have worn my, my Portuguese shirt, jersey. It's okay. We we still have four World Cups. How many does Portugal have? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Best player to win. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Mario's gone. But we're going to kick this thing off the same way we always do by showing you guys our Good Morning Crypto Twitter account at 3TGM Crypto on Twitter. You get access to our entire team. We love going live and tweeting at you guys. We go live every single Thursday at 8 p.m. So if you're looking for us, that's where we'll be. The Bitcoin fear and greed index is still in extreme fear this morning. We were at a 16 yesterday. We're at a 17 today. Not much to address, but there is some very interesting moves happening in the total coin market cap. So the total coin market cap is $1.28 trillion this morning. Bitcoin is at 46% dominance. Ethereum is down at 18%. Bitcoin is sitting back above 31000 at $31,100 this morning. Ethereum, 1900 flat. XRP is $0.41. Cents. Cardano, after having a very bullish week, up almost 30% on the seven-day, has now retraced 6%. We're sitting at about $0.60 cents this morning. We've got Avalanche at $25, Kronos at $0.18, cents. Stellar is at $0.14, cents. Algorand, which I do believe is one of the greatest buying opportunities in the market. I think this is a coin that has so many developers actually implementing real-world use cases on it, but we can dive into that later this episode. That is sitting at $0.40, cents. and Hedera Hashgraph is all the way down at $0.09. Cents. So, Mr. Johnny Crypto, and then Showtime, I'd love to hear from you. We continue to talk about that we're waiting for that short-term pump on Bitcoin, that we might get to 35 to 38K before we continue with our bear market and head to even lower lows than we experienced earlier this month. I'm curious to hear some of your thoughts, Johnny. What do you see in the market this morning? Uh, so, you know, everybody's getting all excited. Oh, we're going to bull run this. Listen, first of all, the only thing that really matters is the retest. It's not how high we go up. It's how far we go down on the retest. So, what we want to see... Now that we kind of, we set a really, really strong 
over the past, I don't know, two weeks or so, if you look at the chart, I don't know if you got the chart there. If you can go to the bar chart, you'll see that. I guess you can kind of use that too. Look at that. I mean, that 28, there's somebody buying this own bitch at 28, right? No matter what, it just couldn't, it was trying to test, 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 and it held up. So now, you know, you're buying up all that volume at that those levels and we're busting up. Now, how high we go up isn't going to match. When you come back down and retest that 28, does that 28 hold? If that 28 holds, then you know, like, okay, we got some real diamond hands in this thing, real institutional buyers, and we're probably going to then springboard off of that. And then I'm going to get excited. But until then, right now, no, I'm not excited. I don't even look at it. I don't care. And now it's still fear is only me. And you know what I always say about fear? Replace the word fear with buy. And I told you guys this weekend, I went on a shopping spree. spree. I bought a shit ton of stuff. And, you know, I'm just waiting for the next paycheck so I can buy some more. But, yeah, just this is the opportunity still to buy right now, in my opinion. And there's so many opportunities in the market, yet retail is hesitant to get involved because we do think we're going to go lower. And if we do see a twenty-five to $22,000 Bitcoin at the bottom of this bear market, those altcoins are going to bleed another 60% from where they're at today. But I'd love to hear some of your thoughts, Showtime. We look across the market today, we're seeing nodes, and I want to I want to call out strong nodes here. We've seen the strong node collapse. We've seen Terra Luna collapse. I'm really curious to, to hear your overall sentiment on passive income opportunities in this space, as well as overall within the crypto market. Yeah, well, the, the crypto market has taken a beating, as we know, right? So you have the traditional kind of crypto market that's not non-passive income that's just taken an absolute hit. The whole Luna thing caused that, but there's a lot of other things. I think we were a little... Just we've been going down for months, right? <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, if the Luna thing wasn't bad and the depegging thing wasn't bad enough, then you had Strong Block coming out and literally, I mean, I call it a soft rug, essentially, right? The project's not gone, but they definitely rugged a lot of people and did things that they said they weren't going to do, which unfortunately has been sort of the MO of a lot of the people running these projects is that they'll say one thing and then they'll end up doing another. And um, I think people are losing confidence. And it's a really sad thing because people take risks and they take risks because they have confidence in people. I always invest in people. And so when you see the people that aren't able to deliver, and it's not just not able to deliver, but just not keeping their word, it hurts the community. And uh, the community deserves better. The community deserves people who will keep their word and do what they say they're going to do. Yeah. And I think there was a little bit of, I don't want to say disingenuous, but a little bit of activity that wasn't totally transparent. They said they were going to be a cap. They did some interesting stuff with defend these projects right now, or what's your overall sentiment on the market? I think I have to switch my name at some point, right? <laughs> People don't want to follow a node defender right now. People the want node to follow offender, maybe <laughs> <laughs> offender. Yeah. But I, I agree with Showtime. Like what, the way that they, they've always been a project. Every time I've listened to AMAs and, and, and uh, some of the, you know, communications that strong block put out, they've always been a project that has been, they were very adamant on community. They always said that we're a community project. We're a community first project. And the way that they've handled this, this change was just not community first. They didn't think about the community first. And it, it put a lot of people in a really tough position, really bad place. Like somebody that invested as short as like a month ago, is in a position where they're not going to get their ROI anytime soon. They're going to have to sit on, on these coins. I think right now, the people that have coins to claim, it, it's actually cheaper for you to just buy the coins if you really want to have those coins. It's cheaper at this point to just buy the coins and let them sit in your wallet than actually to claim than to actually claim those those coins because it's going to cost you $30 to $35 for, for the monthly fee. It's going to cost you another $30 to $35 to, to claim the coins. And then the coin is worth you know, $10. So you're better off just buying the coin if you believe the price is going to go up. Yeah, it's it's a tough position. It's it's a really, people are, are just not confident. Uh, I don't think anybody wants to involve, to invest in some kind of node project at the moment. You're right, Mario. And I think one of the things that's difficult about navigating the node space is that you have to often operate, you have to trade the token correctly, right? Anybody who is just compounding their strong got absolutely destroyed on the back end. And anybody who wasn't taking profit is now sitting in a situation where they don't even have that option. But I do want to dive into something very interesting this morning, which is our first tweet for today. Johnny Crypto, you always talk about the technology curve. And this is another example of that here. In 2000, people were calling the internet a fad. And now in 2022, we have certain retail investors, I wouldn't say us, calling crypto a fad. We're looking at the technology adoption curve and they are eerily similar. What are some of your thoughts, Johnny? I love it. I absolutely. I'm so glad I got to live during the internet fad in the 90s 
I got to learn from it. I got to lose money. Don't do what I did. I bought Amazon at 17 and sold it at 27 like a jackass, right? And I was taught that lesson so that I don't make that same mistake here. But this is exactly, you want to talk about a blessing. Literally the same exact thing is going to happen. The internet boom is going to explode on blockchain technology. And the beautiful thing is everybody here on this show, everybody I follow us on Twitter, everybody in the audience, you know, our live stream, they all get it. They're all in early and they're all going to be super, super happy. And we'll think some people will have life changing experiences through <coughs> through the boom that's going to be coming in the next, you know. I mean, so the Internet thing took took many, many years, right? I mean, Amazon took many, many years to get here. I mean, we're talking 10, 20 years. They're going to have it quick. But there will be some big meteoric or, or euphoric runs probably between now and 2025, maybe in between 2030. So this is a super exciting time. Um, and just, just, I don't care what the price is doing today. I care in 2025. So just pack your bags and, and set it and forget it. That, that's my opinion. And this is just another opportunity not to get fudded out of the market. But Johnny Crypto, you were actually spotted by a fan this weekend pulling off of the highway. I found this to be very interesting, but I didn't know you had such a crappy car, man. I think it's, I think it's time you go and get another car. What I do, <laughs> look at the form on that. Look at that skid turn. That's like brilliant. I mean, come on, you know how hard that is to do at that speed, dude. That's impressive. That's He's impressive. drifting. It is. It is impressive, Jenny Crypto. But I'd expect nothing less. You and Mario are both, both pretty much NASCAR drivers after what we saw in Arizona. But I do want to get some comments from Showtime. Bitcoin is currently at an all-time high. 4.4 million Bitcoin have not moved from their wallets in five years. Almost 25 percent of the circulating supply. Is Showtime. I'm interested to see how much of a bullish indicator do you think this is? Are we overdue for some price action here? Or is this bear market just getting started? No, I mean, look at this. What does this tell you? I mean, the people who know, know. The people who are holding Bitcoin, these people who are not moving, these are the people who are holding. These are the people who are doing exactly what Johnny just said, right? I mean, you can make a lot of mistakes. You can make the mistake of not buying. <laughs> That's the biggest mistake. You can make the mistake of selling too early. And you can make the mistake of selling everything at a certain price. And I think those are all big mistakes. I mean, look, this is a bullish indicator, you know, that you look, you talk about HODL, you talk about holding your crypto. That's what these people are doing. I mean, you know, look, we're right now, we got a little bit of a move up. Okay. I think this is more of just a little small relief rally because we're so oversold. Um, I think we'll be choppy here over the summer. I think we'll make a move in the fall, but bottom line, I mean, look, if people are holding these people who have been holding, they've been holding for a while. They know. And always shout out to people who know. And I think that a lot of these institutions did their initial buying at that high $20,000 range, that $28,000, $29,000 range. So that's why me and Johnny were initially saying we wouldn't anticipate us going much lower than there because there's so much buying support. But Mario, before we hop into our Janet Yellen video, I'd love to hear from you. How do you feel about overall? Forget about the nodes, right? We're looking at the crypto market as a whole. Bitcoin is dangerously, dangerously low as opposed to its all-time high. People are panicking, and I think it's actually one of the best times to start your dollar cost average process. Even if we're going to head lower, it's almost impossible to catch the bottom. So the best thing you can do to deleverage yourself is taking a certain amount of cash, maybe 10% of your expendable income every single Friday, put that into the market, set it and forget it. What are some of your thoughts, Mario? Yeah, there's a lot of on-chain data that's pointing to, to, to Bitcoin being... In, in a good position right now for, for accumulation. We're seeing a lot of wallets, a lot of the whale wallets are actually not dumping their Bitcoin, they're accumulating, they're keeping their Bitcoin in wallets, Bitcoin is leaving exchanges, going into long-term storage wallets. So those are bullish indicators. Uh, for me personally, I got rid of most of my Bitcoin around February, 2020, 2021. So at these levels, like 25, I will really start to consider accumulating Bitcoin again when we get closer to like 20. I really think we will touch the 20 at some point. Um, I'm going to stay fundamental with that. And I know there's a lot of indicators, but just the markets have played out in a way that it's so important for you to stay fundamental because just when you think things could be different, they actually do end up repeating. And even though you might think they may not. So yeah, I relief rally. I, I'm, I'm thinking that we will have some kind of relief rally for, for this month. I'm thinking we'll, we'll go a little bit higher than 32. Uh, but, but, eventually we will touch lower levels. I think it will just be relief rally, you know, higher, uh, lower high, and then making another lower low at some point. And we're actually getting comments right now saying that we're most likely going to touch lower than 20K. That would be very, very dangerous for the altcoins. But something that's undeniable is that we are undeniably in times of inflation. And that's what our next clip is about. We're going to show you guys a Janet Yellen clip admitting that inflation 
is no longer transitory and it is here to stay. But before we do that, show us some love, smash that like button. All social medias are linked below. And if you're looking for access to our special guest, he's got a Twitter, he's got a YouTube channel, and both of those are down below. So go smash that follow button and check out his comment. But with that being said, I'm going to let this clip play and then get some comments from the group. I think I was wrong then about um, the path that inflation um, would take. As I mentioned, there have been unanticipated and large shocks to the economy that have boosted uh, energy and food prices and um, supply bottlenecks that have affected our economy badly that I didn't at the time didn't fully understand. Here's what I find so interesting about this clip is that Janet Yellen's only job is to understand exactly that. And Coach JV has been saying this for about two years now, but it took Janet Yellen all the way until May of 2022 to figure out that inflation is not transitory. I'd love to hear from our special guest first. Showtime, we look at a lot of these political figures and we don't trust a word they say. When we look at Tweety Bird Janet Yellen here, it's clear that she talks out of both sides of her mouth. She'll tell us that she had no idea inflation wasn't transitory, but she's been anticipating this for quite a while. So I'm very interested to hear some of your thoughts. What do you see in this video, Showtime? Well, I see someone that uh, wants you to believe what she's saying, but I don't think she believes what she's saying, right? So the bottom line is I think when we all saw that, we heard, oh, it's transitory. None of us believe that. I mean, look, we got into cryptocurrency, precious metals, uh, different areas in cryptocurrency, whether that's passive income or just buy and hold, because we saw what was coming. We saw the handwriting on the wall. You know, I've always said that I think the investors are just some of the smartest people, especially in this cryptocurrency space, right? Um, we saw what was coming. And it's very interesting because when I think of Janet Yellen, you know, um, a lot of people don't notice, but they're starting quantitative tightening today. June 1st, 2022, go look up a quantitative tightening is the last time they did that in, uh, I believe it was September 2019, the repo rates spiked, which kind of had to force a quantitative easing, right? And then, of course, Janet Yellen's out there saying, oh, yeah, quantitative tightening is going to be like, quote, watching paint dry. That's exactly what she said and ended up causing more QE and more money. It had the exact opposite effect. That quantitative tightening starts again today. So anytime these people talk, I'm always thinking, okay, they have an agenda. We always have to kind of play the role, the UN interpreter. What are they really trying to say? And you always have to read in between the lines. Whoever has the money controls the people. And what we know about Janet Yellen is that she does not get her money from the American public. We saw publicly last year, she gave two speeches to Citibank that were each 45 minutes long. And she received $7 million for those two speeches. Whereas our taxpayer dollars... <laughs> They only give her about 200000 per year. So who do you think she's representing when she's talking about inflation and when she's talking about the long-term interest of our financial situation here? Johnny Crypto, what are some of your thoughts? Oh, my God. First of all, first of all, number one, Mr. Wright is right. All right. She should be sitting at home in the kitchen making some cookies for her grandchildren. That's That That would be number one. Number two, guys, let me tell you all the time on this show. This is WWE. You're just watching the show. It's right here in front of you. Showtime just said it. They all have an agenda. Her role is to play the, you know, the, the, the kind of face role. Good guy. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see it. I missed it. Bullshit. Guys, these guys create these situations. If the Fed puts more money into the market, they create inflation. When the Fed pulls more money out of the market, they, they, they create recessions. It's they control the freaking switches, all right? And then they come out and they turn, oh, we didn't see this. We didn't see that. Well, of course you did. You are being subliminally programmed to think that inflation is here to stay forever because their agenda is to make you think inflation is here forever so that they can get higher prices and continue to steal your wealth. You're just watching a live massive robbery. The middle class is getting their wealth robbed from them right in front of your eyes, but they're telling you it's inflation when in reality, it's just them and the way they've set up the game and the game you're playing. Because the right way to let this go is you just let the businesses that are supposed to fail, fail. You don't bail nobody out. You know, none of this bullshit printing out. And then the, you know, the system will just naturally, just like the jungle, the ecosystem, right? The big lions eat all the other small, you know, it's just going to happen naturally. And then the system works normal, but they're, they're artificially adjusting it. And then they come on and they put their faces and their heels on. And then they tell you a narrative on what they want you to believe. That's what you saw. You heard it here first, right on this show. Don't believe none of the bullshit. They're going to bring you through whatever they want to bring you through. And that's why, Probably a lot of people are holding Bitcoin because it's one of the few things that are probably the most, you know, inflation hedge out there other than gold. 
And Johnny, something that's undeniable right now is that I think we're moving into an environment long-term where we have two classes of people. We have one class of people who are self-sustainable. They don't rely on the government for their income. They have their own economies, their own businesses that are providing for them. And then we have this separate class of people, which is probably going to be much, much larger, maybe four times the size. And they're going to be dependent on UBI. They're going to be dependent on government money and people printing central bank digital currencies and putting them directly into their wallets, telling them what they can buy telling them what they can say if we incorporate a social credit score. Showtime, before we kick it to Mario here, I want to hear some of your thoughts. Do you think we are going into an environment where UBI is not only going to be optional, it's going to be essential. People are going to be dependent on universal basic income because a lot of the jobs that we have today, such as fast food employees, truck drivers, those are on their way out. So when you take a decade time horizon, where do you see us in 10 years? Sheesh, I don't want to know where we see ourselves in 10 years, but I can tell you, you know, it, it, if you look at it from kind of maybe a negative point of view, I think UBI is a very negative kind of situation, right? This may be like peak humanity right now, which is kind of uh, a bad- I hope not. Well, I, I hope not too. But, you know, you think about UBI, look, I mean, I hate to say it as much as, as I would rather not say it's a fact, kind of fact of reality that that's where a lot of this blockchain stuff goes, right? I mean, they need public adoption. They need the popularity. They need the populace saying blockchain, great, blockchain, great. And all of a sudden they create the problem. They come with the reaction, with the solution of UBI, central bank digital currencies, tracking, instant taxation, facial recognition, UBI, where, you know, you're basically sitting at home living in the metaverse while the rich, you know, billionaires go out to the real beaches and things like that. It's really kind of a negative sort of outlook on it, right? When I think of UBI, I think of a very dystopian um, outlook that these people have, right? Now, whether that really pans out that way is another conversation, but I do see UBI happening. I mean, look, we I can't tell you how many times I'll go out and just some McDonald's will say closed, right? It'll say, oh, we're closed and, and I'll find out it's because nobody came to work. When have we ever seen that? I mean, you have businesses, private businesses, literally competing with the government, right? That's never happened before. So I just think you're going to, they're breeding people for a situation where, hey, sit at home, we'll pay you, you know, five grand when it's really worth 500. And I think that's where we're going, unfortunately. Basically, just to build on you, you know what that really is in a nutshell? That's just basically you're trading off your, they're trying to buy your freedom. They say, here, we'll give you a few peddlings. We'll give you a grand a month. You stay home, you do nothing. And people are going to be like, oh, yes, thank you. I'll take it. And they're going to run like knucklehead sheeps, right? And go set up their UBI wallets. They're going to set up, they're going to go, you know, go to bed at eight o'clock, take the two vaccine shots a day, you know, eat their pills and swallow whatever they're being told to do. Don't say nothing bad on social media. And then you get your thousand bucks a month and you get to live like a peon, right? No freaking thank you. I'll go to work, I'll create my own opportunities. But that's kind of what UBI is, is it's really trading off your freedoms for, for them. It's just, it's crazy. And I can't believe I, people are going to do it. And a lot of people are going to do it, in, in my opinion. Well, Johnny Crypto, money only solves money problems, right? And if you remove personal freedoms and you remove the ability for people to be individuals, you're going to have a problem where most of the people have a lack of purpose. There's going to, they're, they're not going to understand what their role is in society. Great. I sit at home and I collect my minimum government funding. But at the end of the day, what the hell am I doing with my life? I think the purpose of being a person is to build, create, evolve, and grow, become a better version of yourself. And you're not going to be able to do that locked in your house, living off government money, dependent on other adults to fund your family. But Mario, I'm really curious to hear your thoughts before we hop into our articles for today. Yeah, I think it's really important to remember that all these things that the government always come out and say, they're very calculated and they're all done and said to drive us in a certain direction. Exactly. Like the, we we are fortunate to be in a community where we are aware and we bring awareness and we always talk about what's actually going on in the world. And so we realized that inflation was here, but the mainstream folk that's watching Fox News, CNN, you know, nothing against either, but um, they they tend to believe those things that they're, they're being told. And, and those things are being told to keep you in the direction that they want you to go. At the time, they didn't want you to panic. They didn't want Americans to you know, to panic and, and believe that we were in an inflation zone. But the reality is that we were. And now they're coming out and saying, I'm sorry, I was wrong. And yes, we are in inflation. And I'm just really glad that we were aware of it and that we were able to make adjustments and and make make moves in order to protect ourselves and protect our families. And that's what the most important thing is. And so, yeah, just <laughs> those things are said just to keep you in that direction. That's something really important that people need to be be aware of. 
And I saw some data just regarding those jobs that because I own a local business and often I drive, you know, I drive around just to see what's going on. And a lot of these local businesses in the area where I have mine, they, they all have a sign in their window saying, you know, people, we need people hiring. And I saw some data that currently there's two job offerings for every one in America, this is. So there's currently two job offerings for every one American that's looking for a job. So there's huge demand for labor, but it's not there. So that's that's going to affect the markets as well at some point in some way or another. You're spot on, Mario. And somebody commented that they don't need Fox or CNN. They have Good Morning Crypto. We are coming, people. We just got started three months ago. Give us five years. We're going to be mainstream and we're going to continue bringing you the most relevant and impactful crypto related topics on a daily basis. But I want to keep the conversation where we're at right now. I have one more question for you, Showtime, about UBI, social credit scores, and central bank digital currencies, right? As we look at what's happening in China today, they already have a social credit score and they already have a central bank digital currency. When they had a health crisis a couple of months ago, they locked down a city of about 260 million people and flew drones out with facial recognition to see who was out of their house and automatically dox their central bank digital currency account. The connection that we're seeing, these things are wo are woven together and they're both controlled by people that we do not like and trust. Really curious to hear your thoughts. Will we ever see an environment like that in the United States or are we going to have to fight against it? Is it our job as the people to rebel? And I don't mean rebel necessarily in a war sense. I mean, intellectually rebel, understand what this stuff is, the long-term impact and avoid these technologies. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it's funny you, you say that because um, I was speaking to somebody just recently who was there during those lockdowns that was out taking a picture of the facial recognition camera with their phone Two minutes later, the phone turned off, just turned off remotely just for no reason. Right. Oh, shit. So wow. Things like things like that. Right. I heard yep. that story. and I'm like, yeah, I'm sure your phone was turned off because that's the environment that they've uh, put their people in. I think the world is kind of moving in that direction. And I think that there's certain um, uh, cornerstones that have to be brought down, like the United States. And I think they're certainly trying to push in that direction. You have a real heart of freedom and uh, a spirit of independence in this country that's going to fight hard against it. Um, but you got to understand that I think the people that implement this stuff, their time horizon is so much longer than ours. I mean, we think in terms of a year or two, I was having this conversation with a family member of mine. And they're like, yeah, but like I should never cash out of crypto because the dollar is going to be no more. And I, I got to keep in crypto. I said, you want to take your profits too. Okay. And then, so we got into this conversation about the time, horizon a lot of this stuff i said you gotta remember like i could be having this conversation with my grandchildren right i mean it just these people when they think of takeovers they don't act in a day they don't act in a year they act in a century right so we have to think long term these people are playing the long game we're sprinting they're running a marathon so it's not up to just us to have this mindset i think it's up to our children and grandchildren also be able to have that same mindset otherwise they're just going to get railroaded yeah, and, and you know, the reality is here's what's happening. So I'm probably going to offend some people, but I don't mean it. But just the reality is the Asian nations are more – I've been to Asia. They're very compliant. They listen to the government because if they don't, they get killed in the streets, right? And in America, we have a complete opposite um, fundamental freedom stance here, right, where, where it's completely opposite. You're not told what to do. And obviously, we have the most um, – owners, I think it's 326 million guns in this country, right? So what do you do to get us to be China? Because that's what they want. And China will be the world reserve currency and they will be the world, the world superpower in the next 10 years. And when they do, then they'll use that to brainwash the rest of the world that this is the way, you know, the world should be operated and run. And they'll drag people along. Now, how does that work? Well, you can't take a bunch of, you know, gun tugging Americans <laughs> that love their guns, especially our Southern brothers. You should thank them all. Cause that's why we have our freedom still. Um, so if any Southern brothers are out here, God bless you. And thank you. Um, you have to change that mindset right in America. And that's going to happen over the years. And, and with these shootings, right? That's why these things, you know, potentially happen. It's very, very interesting that the same exact shooting that happened in Newtown, Connecticut, just happened in Texas. Go watch, go look at the details of how the whole thing started, you know, with, with the shooting of the mother up here and the shooting of the ground. It's, it's almost like they got the model and they're just going to repeat it. And what does that do? Well, in here in Connecticut, what happens? We lost a lot of gun rights. Uh, the gun companies got sued. Now they can't make gun companies can actually get sued now for somebody. Shoot. A car company can't get sued when, when you kill somebody with a car, but a gun company can get sued. Why? Because they can't take away our second amendment, right? 
And that's the only reason why America is still free. But they're not going to try that. Because could you imagine the uproar that's going to happen in America if you try to take away our gun? So what are you going to do instead? What's better? Put the gun companies out of business. That's what's going to happen. They're going to be out of business. Because they now they can get sued. Somebody goes and shoots somebody. We sue the gun company. Gun company can't get insurance, and they're going to be out of business. And that's how it's going to happen over time. It's probably going to take 20, 20 years, maybe something like that. And then you'll see that that mindset will start to change. Guns are bad. We don't need guns. We just need to be a peace-loving country. And what's the number one way? Germany took over and, and, and took over its citizens. The first step you do is you take away its citizens' guns. So pray that our Southern brothers hold up as long as they can, um, because I think at that point, that's when we will see kind of move it towards that more dystopian world and the mindset will change. Somebody commented down below and said, you can't escape a cage if you don't know you're in it. And I really do think that applies to what we're going through today. If anybody has studied the World Economics Forum agenda for 2030, the most prominent thing you should know is that you're going to own nothing and you're going to be happy. So it is very funny that, of course, they want to take our guns away. And of course, they want to push these narratives where people aren't allowed to be independent. People aren't allowed to have open discussions where you say controversial things and somebody disagrees with you, but you're both brothers and you move on. You learn from those things. It doesn't need to be this be all end all where people aren't allowed to have their freedom of speech. I think freedom of speech is the most important thing we can fight for right now. And I do believe that guns play a big part of that. Showtime, why don't you take us home on this topic and then we'll hop into our Ethereum article. Yeah, bottom line, look, the First Amendment was not designed to protect nice speech. Right. It was designed to protect offensive speech and not necessarily go around offending people, but things that might bother people. If everybody's uh, nice and saying things nice, that doesn't bother anybody. You don't need a First Amendment. Right. But remember, you don't have a First Amendment without a Second Amendment. Okay, because like Johnny said, every time you get a takeover, it's the guns first. Okay, there are really people losing their lives. I think some of the events around these shootings are very questionable. I think the way they happen are very questionable. in a lot of instances, sometimes it's negligence. Sometimes it's other things. But the bottom line is they're going to go after the guns. But it's not. Again, I talk about this time horizon. This is not. We're going to come knock. Everybody's thinking we're going to come knocking on your door to take your guns. No, it'll be a bloodbath. It's never going to happen. It would never happen. No. What they can do is they can limit the ammunition. They yep. can put gun manufacturers out of business. They can make you go through 500 background checks that take six months. There's ways to do it where you don't necessarily take it away. You still have, oh, you still have your right. You just can't get one. Right. Exactly. And that's the long play. So we have to think long play with these guys. Mm. Because that's their mindset. Yeah. And, you know, just to wrap this up, um, that is 100% correct, right? Is how do you how do you take it away without taking it away? And that's really what they're doing. And I want to give a shout out to our girl, Angelina Love, back in the house today with that beautiful form kick to the face. It was awesome to Gensler. So thank you, Angelina. And, yeah, let's keep it rolling. Awesome. And if you guys are enjoying this content, there's 190 live listeners out there. Show us some love. Smash that like button. If you're looking for any a deeper, more fundamental understanding of the crypto market, the best place to do so is at the 3T Warrior Academy, where you get access to our entire team, starting with Coach JV. We do weekly portfolio updates. We host tons of weekly calls. You can access us basically 24-7 if you're within this academy. So if you're looking to do that, that's the best place to do so. But we're going to keep the ball rolling here and hop into our first article for today, which is the George Soros Fund prefers Ethereum over Bitcoin. The manager of the George Soros fortune remains bullish on cryptocurrencies despite the recent correction. So it's like we say, when the markets are bullish, they tell retail to buy. When the the markets are bearish, they tell institutions to buy. So the CEO of the George Soros Fund predicted that Ethereum will gain more traction compared to Bitcoin. They claim that climate change impact will be an increasingly large focus within this market. And Ethereum is expected to dramatically reduce It's power consumption by transitioning from proof of work to proof of stake. So we've heard these rumors for a really long time, but this is supposed to be fully implemented in August. We're going to keep you guys updated on that. The hedge fund manager believes that the crypto is here to stay, stating it has gone mainstream and that what Fidelity did last week was a larger uh, move for the crypto markets. It's the first door that has been opened. So Fidelity recently announced that its consumers would be able to invest a portion of their retirement funds into Bitcoin. This is a move that could significantly bolster cryptocurrency adoption. So we talk about this on our show. We see them cover it on other platforms. But it is very interesting to see that George Soros not only believes crypto is here to stay and that mass adoption has already taken place, but that this fidelity news is going to be fundamental for the crypto markets going forward. Let's start off with Johnny Crypto. Johnny Crypto, what are some of your thoughts? 
yeah, you know, this has to happen for Ethereum. They need to, <clears throat> they need to, um, to go to a lower power consumption. For this to be able to happen, as we talk about here, um, <clears throat> for it to go mainstream, because it's right now, it's the king of the hill. But we know that everybody's coming at it left and right. Cardano's coming, Solano's coming. All these proof of stake solutions are coming out there. And if if Ethereum doesn't reduce its power consumption, it has no chance to survive in the long run. But it will. It is the king. All the money is there. <clears throat> A lot of the the apps, the most of them, are built on that platform. And if if they hope to continue to attract developers to do that, they definitely need to move in this direction. Um, it is a joke, you know, to say that we, you know, they believe crypto's here to stay. Yeah, we know that already. <laughs> We've been telling everybody crypto's here to stay. We know it's mainstream. We know that the blockchain is a, a new way of doing things faster, faster, better, and cheaper. And that is how companies work. Every single company, I work for a high tech company. First things I'm talking about, make it better and cheaper, right? That's what blockchain helps do. There's no doubt it's going to be here. And the fascinating thing is this time we all have the opportunity to invest in some of this stuff that's going to grow, drive the future, and hopefully we can create some generational wealth for our families. Johnny, it sounds like you're choking over there. Maybe go and grab a sip of water. But what I do think is very interesting is that Bank of America said they're going to hire 110 new engineers and developers specifically to focus on crypto. And then we saw the SEC double the size of their unit. If we're going to see mass adoption, if crypto really is here to stay, it's going to be these massive players adopting it. That's the reason it's here to stay. So Showtime, what are some of your thoughts? I thought that was such a funny comment. It's like with every engineer, the SEC tries to add an enforcement agent, right? <laughs> to try to kind of come after them. But yeah, look, um, I think that, um, you know, Ethereum is definitely here to stay. They've got some issues, right? I think that, um, you know, I, I know we're going to talk about this in a minute, but I, I do think that Ethereum will flip Bitcoin. Someday. As a matter of fact, I think a lot of cryptos will flip Bitcoin someday, right? I think you have a lot of really fantastic innovation in the space. You know, anytime you're the first to do something, it's um, an advantage in that you're the first to market, but it's a disadvantage because you haven't quite learned yet what to do and what not to do. So a lot of your competitors are going to see what you're doing, what you're not doing. They're going to make a better version. And then there's going to be someone underneath them making a better version. That's why you've got the Cardanos and the Avalanche and Phantom and Kronos. I know Johnny. Um, and all these different blockchains that are, I think, much better than Ethereum, right? But because you kind of become the first player, you're always sort of there, even if you're not the best. And I do feel that Bitcoin has kind of been pigeonholed here as a store of value or digital real estate, whereas Ethereum has so many more use cases. That's the main reason we believe this thing is going to flip. Bitcoin and Ethereum are currently down 54 and 60 cent from their all-time highs and Fitzpatrick, who is the head fund manager, told Bloomberg that the U.S. economy would be able to absorb the Fed rate hikes without heading into a recession. So we have an article following this one that actually states the exact opposite of that. But I'd love to hear from the node defender, Mario. We're bullish on Ethereum. We always talk about it. And we're going to dive into freeway while we're on this topic. But I'm really interested to hear your overall sentiment. Do you think that Ethereum will ever flip Bitcoin? That's a great question. I do think it will flip Bitcoin at some point. And I, the reason why I think it will flip Bitcoin at some point is because of all the developments and adoption that it will bring into the platform. Uh, it's a it's it's a technology that is able to do way more than what Bitcoin is essentially doing at the moment, uh, being a store of value like gold. Because so much can be brought into the, the Ethereum blockchain for that reason, you know, NFTs, um, DeFi, you know, the list goes on, SBTs. Mm -hmm. Uh, which we'll be discussing. I I think for that reason, at some point, the market cap can be larger than 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 Bitcoin. Um, I don't know what that time frame will be. I've seen some. I've seen a comparison that can Ethereum be the MySpace of the crypto space? You know, be this initial leader, but then another project or another platform taking over. And Showtime just mentioned, you know, Cardano, Kronos. There's a lot of other blockchains and platforms that essentially right now are already better and more efficient than Ethereum. Uh, and not to forget about Cosmos. You know, the Cosmos ecosystem is, in my opinion, amazing. And Kronos is built on the on the Cosmos ecosystem. So I think there's already other blockchain projects in place that are better than Ethereum and, and more cost efficient and more efficient for that matter. But uh, I'm interested I'm interested to see 
what's going to play out throughout the next few years, if Ethereum is going to be able to continue to be the dominant in the space. Uh, but definitely it's going to co coexist and it's going to be a multi-chain future, in my opinion. And when we listen to the World Economic Forum, they tell us that three things are going to dominate this next decade, and it's the three C's, right? So we've got climate, we've got uh, <laughs> we've got climate, we've got crypto, and we've got C19. I almost said the word. I wasn't sure if I'm allowed to with the algorithm and everything, but Johnny Crypto, I saw you had some thoughts. What are you thinking? Just to wrap this up, I was just going to say at the end of the day, we've been saying this here for a long time. It's like WWE. You're going to see Bitcoin is going to get villainized, right? It's the only one that's going to be left once Ethereum moves to proof of work. Oh, sorry, proof of stake. It's the only one left, the only one in energy, you know, majorly energy dependent. So they're going to villainize it. They're going to call it the bad thing. You know why? Because it's actually the only true, real good decentralized currency that actually takes the power away from the government. There's not a Chinaman's chance in hell that they're going to let that thing be out there without villainizing it and beating the piss out of it and destroying it. Now, I think what will happen is at the end of the day, if billionaires decide they want it to be, uh, digital gold and exchange of value for more of just something where you're going to hold it long term. That that's probably what will be more of a store of value rather than than a form of payment. That maybe it can survive, but it's going to get villainized. I almost guarantee it will be the bad guy at some point in time. Johnny, so, I just want to add there is some data that actually proves otherwise to what you're saying as far as Bitcoin being decentralized. The mining of Bitcoin is heavily centralized. So you're right, this is true. That's a concern. This is, this is 100 percent true. Nobody talks enough about that particular part it is so true just a few of them um can literally take the whole system down but in general the general concept and actually the first bitcoin the way it was designed before they forked it actually it wasn't like that mara but you're right it is now and i think it would be appropriate to have a freeway discussion here showtime if that's all right so we always talk about freeway the platform that allows you to earn up to 43% on your Ethereum, Bitcoin, Gold, and Tether. And we're obviously on this panel taking advantage of that. Maybe you can just speak a little bit about the product. We've had a lot of concerns about sustainability. Whenever anyone sees rewards above 8 to 10%, never mind as high as 30%, there's always questions about if this stuff is going to be here to stay. So why don't you give people some peace of mind and kind of explain why you're so confident in Freeway and, and why you're taking advantage of this product. Yeah, one of the arguments that I just don't personally understand and I get it. It's what we've always been told. If it's too good to be true, then it probably is. But guys, crypto is too good to be true. I mean, if you were buying Bitcoin, what, over the last couple of years, you're up how, however many thousands of percentage points or hundreds of percentage points. Around. That stuff is too good to be true. A lot of the passive income stuff, even if you were to go and tell someone, yeah, you can earn 8%, they'd look at you like you're crazy. I mean, you're 8%. That's impossible, right? So just the, the too good to be true, I mean, that's kind of the decentralized blockchain world. And when we look at that, you know, in the traditional markets, I have mentioned the medallion fund before over the last, I think it's 30 years or so, the average returns have been 60% annually. I mean, that sounds too good to be true. That's even higher than freeway. And that's not even on the blockchain, right? But the average peasant can't get into that. Yeah, but you know, freeway has been around for a while. It's just that they are kind of heating up right now. And they're heating up for a few reasons. I think a lot of people like myself and other, I, I'm not, hate to call myself an influencer, but other people that have a following, I'll put it that way, um, have found out and been talking about Freeway, right? But I mean, just this year alone, they've grown over 300%, right? They're, uh, you know, growing on an average of uh, five and a half million dollars per week, right? But they, the interesting thing about them versus other platforms where you have BlockFi, Celsius, uh, even Coinbase got slapped by the SEC for trying to create a yield uh, uh, you know, kind of system because they're taking your crypto and they're lending it out. There's something clearly that the SEC does not like about that. Whereas Freeway doesn't lend your crypto out. It stays in your name. So you got a KYC process. It's in a segregated account, cold storage account that's in your name. They don't touch it. They underwrite against it. Okay. And they do quant trading on the Forex market. Now, what I can tell you is that the 43% they're offering you, they make three times that in profit. Right. So they are very profitable. Now, whether I can say this, I'm sure I can. I had a, a call with the uh, CEO two weeks or so ago. And, uh, you know, he was telling me that, um, you know, a lot of the traditional finance people in the company have been wanting him to drop the yield. They're like, we could be so much more profitable if you just drop the yield. And he's like, I don't want to drop the yield. That's this is the people we're serving. This is these are our customers that we're serving. Right. You know, they've got to report on a daily basis to Greek regulators with their numbers. They're going to be a regulated prime brokerage in the U.S. this summer, as long as that pans out, which I, I was told they're still on schedule to do. 
you know, you don't do that by being a kind of too good to be true scam rug pull type of thing. And I know 43% looks like a lot, but when you look at some of these traditional markets with funds and things that the peasants are not allowed to get in, they're making even more than that. And they don't even have the advantage of blockchain. So what, what Showtime is talking about for anybody who doesn't know is there is the most successfully traded fund in the world is the medallion fund. And the medallion fund is not offered to retail investors like us. It's not even offered to traditional accredited investors. You actually have to know somebody who works in this company or is a part of this fund to get involved. But this fund has given an annual return since 1982. They've given an annual return of 66% on the year. But we've been subconsciously or consciously programmed as retail investors to think if we see 8, 10, 12%, well, that's too good to be true. Yet these billionaires are taking advantage of these opportunities that are giving them a third of their wealth back every single year. Anyways, Showtime, if you know anyone in the medallion fund and would like to hook up any of the members of this show, please feel free. But Johnny Crypto, I saw we got a question in the chat. Well, you have a couple of things. So first of all, <clears throat> the reality is in most cases for, for the non-credit you know, credit investor folks that can get into this, um, 12 to 15% is too good to be true. Just, just ask anybody who got into Bernie Madoff's project you know, who was getting 12 to 15% year over year over year. And then what happened, right? We found out it was a Ponzi scheme. It was bull crap. Most of these strong nodes were Ponzi schemes. And you saw those returns were crapping out, right? So the reality is a lot of the, when you get high returns like that, they're, they, they aren't sustainable. They're not real. And so the one few time you find something that's real, it kind of feels like, you know, do you trust it? Do you question it? So Showtime, I got a question for you. So somebody asked if I if I invest in freeway. I have not 3%. I love that. Should I rent the mortgage the house if that shit's real? It makes it would be the smart thing to do if that was truly sustainable, right? So my question is this. Do you know if they show um us if you invest in it or do they show the book? Can we see every single transaction? Because I would love to see the gains. Because if they're real trades and they're real and they show that, right? Show me the money, then I would invest in it. I want to see proof. Because there's just too many scams, too many rogue pulls, too much bullshit going on out there that I would like to see real proof that they are making 100 and what'd you say, 3x? So they're making 120%. And the best fund in the world you just showed only makes 66%. So how are these guys smarter mm -hmm. than, than the other fund? So I'm just wondering, do you know if they show proof of that? Are we able to see those numbers? They're currently undergoing a financial audit as we speak. Um, when you're talking about Quantron, you are talking thousands of trades a minute mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a big Micro undertaking trades. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. you're you're talking uh quite an undertaking to audit that right they have shown partial data um if you were in their private group they have shown the people in the private group the partial data before they're putting it out to the public right but okay. the delays in that have been the massive undertaking of actually getting all that data parsed out and in some sort of readable format that people can see right but okay. what I can tell you is seeing the partial data, it is legitimate. Okay. okay. Um, but that is coming out to the public, hopefully very soon. That's awesome. All right. Well, I'm going, guys, I'll be right back. I got to go to the bank and mortgage the house. Time. <laughs> I'll just be, you know, just <laughs> I'm doing it on your word, man. I'm you know what's even funny here, Johnny, yeah. is that we just got a comment in the chat. It said, can you speak about freeway? I mean, that's a perfect time to come out. We've literally been deep diving on Freeway. So Freeway is a product that's offered in the United States, freeway.io slash US. I believe if you go to the initial website, there's a link that takes you to the US one. But what it does is it gives you 30, it gives you 20% totally liquid staking on your Bitcoin, Ethereum, and you can get as high as 43%. So anybody out there who's saying I'm dollar cost averaging into ETH and I plan on holding till 2025. Well, that's exactly what I'm doing. So every month, every Friday, I'm buying a certain amount of ETH taking that Ethereum, I'm moving it directly onto Freeway, and I'm allowing that Ethereum to earn me passive income, just like Showtime described. But Showtime, why don't you take us home here, and then we'll dive into our XRP content for today. Yeah, I'm actually working. This is not, I hate the shill, but anybody who has more questions about Freeway, I am working on a Twitter Spaces with them. Um, they've actually done some Twitter Spaces. Uh, the, 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 two, um, the two main people that run the company just did one, I think like two days ago on their official Freeway account. So you want to go check that out. I mean, it was like an hour long. They talk about how do you make money? Um, how do I make money? How is this legitimate? All that kind of stuff. But I know I of any project that I've ever covered, Freeway is the one I get the most questions about because I think people see it. How am I earning 40% or 43% on a stable coin? It, it's just, it sounds like a scam. Does it not sound like a scam? Of course, of course it does. Absolutely. Of course it does. And, and quite frankly, if I was to walk to my neighbor right now and say, hey, you know, if you uh, gave me your money, I can earn you 8% almost guaranteed. They, they'd think that's a scam, right? So um, I think what we're seeing is we're seeing the innovation of blockchain really bring out the stuff like the medallion fund to the average everyday person.
right? And I mean, you look at Freeway, if you start deep diving on their platform, you'll find out they're making their own blockchain. They're coming out with a debit card that's going to link to a banking service. They're going to have validator nodes. They're going to be doing um, their own stable coin, 100% cash back stable coin. They're just doing a lot. And I want to see a company that is not just innovating, but they're innovating big. They're going to IPO probably in a few years. So big company. And I think that they're here to stay personally. So I want to get one last comment in here. Somebody said it works in a bear market, but implodes in a, sorry, it works in a bull market, implodes in a bear market. I know you're going to, you know, refute those terms. So why don't you just tell us what your thoughts are there? Well, if you're good enough to trade in a bull market, you're good enough to trade in the bear market, right? I mean, the smart well traders, <laughs> the smart traders don't make money Ooh, when the market's going up. They make market, they make money when the market's going up and down. And obviously if they're earning 300% beyond what they're offering you, they're smart traders. 100%. And that's going to conclude our freeway discussion. If you guys enjoyed that, show us some love, smash that like button. All social medias are linked below, but we're going to dive into our XRP content for today, which is a very interesting article. XRP Ledger reaches a historic milestone while the XRPL and Avalanche bridge is going to go live in August. I want to hear from the node defender here. Mario, you, you've talked about Apex previously on our show but this is exactly what they're doing. So Apex is a true node service provider that is building a fully insured bridge from the Avalanche to the XRP Ledger. So this is scheduled to go live by the end of August in 2022, and Apex will be opening a wrapped XRP token on their Apex swap that'll be integrated into the Avalanche ecosystem. Mario, floor is totally open, and then we'll kick it to Showtime. What are some of your overall thoughts on this article, and what do you think it means for the market that these two chains are now going to be linked? It's really cool. Uh it, for me, it was really was really nice to see this come to fruition because it takes one of my passions, which is passive income and nodes. I mean, even though they're not getting the the, the best of attention right now, but uh, and then the XRP, which is another passion that I have. So I think that it's positive. I really like the way that Apex came into the space already with um, with products. So they launched already with their eight with their decks. And that kind of set them apart from some of these other projects. And, you know, Strong essentially doesn't even have anything close to it. All they have is these, per se, partnerships with Polygon and, and, and Phantom and stuff. Like, nobody really knows if those things are actually happening or if anything has actually happened in, in the background. But it, I think there's still a ways to go. I think these projects have a long way to go uh, as far as, like, maturity. We'll have to see a lot of things play out. Um I do like the fact that there's utility. I like the fact that there's a revenue model already implemented in all the things that they say they're coming out with. It was nice to see that Ripple X actually retweeted. So this is an official partnership. And uh, yeah, I'm very interested to see. And I know that Showtime also has a project coming soon. So um, don't know if I if he wants to answer any questions, but just to all our listeners, I I mean I met Showtime personally. He's a he's a very awesome person, and I think that. If he's launching a project, I definitely want to be in it. I definitely want to participate. Um, I think he's he will add good value to the space. So, yeah, uh, as far as Apex, I do see th good things coming. But, again, just just a lot of fear. I think I was expecting a little bit more of a, a pump from the Apex price. Um, I was looking to play it a little bit, you know, take some profits uh, as the announcement came out because this, this has been in the works already for a while. People were instigating on on what what the partnership was going to be and but it didn't really pump so that to me showed to me showed me that there's no hype in the space at the moment people are not really willing to take risks compared to six months ago or even three months ago for that matter showtime i'd love to hear your thoughts thank you mario you're you're a great guy I had a great time hanging out with you and jordan and jordan's friend as well in phoenix so thank you for the kind words yeah um i've spoken to the apex team actually and i i think what definitely set them apart was obviously they came out with something launched. Um, I kind of feel like, you know, back when the DeFi as a service thing was starting, um, nodes was the keyword, right? Then RPC endpoints was the new keyword. Now I think partnerships is the new keyword. I mean, to me, the new keyword should be how much money you're making, right? Money should be the keyword person. That's my opinion, but you know, whatever. I think that this is great for the XRP ledger to bring some xrp utility over to another blockchain i happen to know without mentioning names somebody else is doing the same thing that might actually beat apex to the market actually on this right there's going to be a second bridge for xrp to avalanche right and potentially even phantom um 
So I think what you're going to start to see is some DeFi utility with XRP. Now, I know it's not a DeFi token. It's cross-border settlements, uh, liquidity on demand, things of that nature. But I think it's going to give people something to do with their XRP while they're waiting for the stupid lawsuit and while they're waiting for the inevitable utility and use case to kick in. Feels like we're sitting in purgatory here, but I want to hear from Johnny Crypto really quick. What are some of your thoughts? Well, um, well, first of all, in terms of nodes, um, I was, you know, I'm, I'm cautious on nodes right now. Obviously, the only nodes I really like are real utility nodes like gaming stuff, where I know there's some kind of income like Gala, Playable, Myra, those kinds of things. The other nodes, I'm waiting to see them prove that they can create a true sustainable uh, income on on the in, uh, on the on the input side, right? Versus than just the sales of a of a node itself. But I do want to get to Pink Paws because Pink Paws has been asking uh, a question for two days now. So I want to make sure we. I don't know if it's a he or a she, but regardless, his or her question was um, somewhere along the lines is the escrow for XRP and what does it mean for the XRP price? So I think we you know to owe that to all our audience. So the escrow basically what that means is. Ripple is giving out every month so much coins that they've set aside. I think it's like they've released about 50 billion coins and it's about another 45 or so that are going to come into the market. And they release it on a set schedule every month so many. And so the way to think about that at the end of the day is this. Um, he was asking what's going to happen when the escrow comes in. Well, it's going to be like anything else. As you continue to add more supply to the price, you're going to draw to the price, you're going to drive the price down. It's just like printing more money. That's why I tell everybody. It's so important when you invest in something, go look at the max coin supply because that is the true indication of what the actual worst case scenario price could be based on market cap. So, for example, if they got, uh, you know, let's use Ripple, 50 billion coins, right? And the price is what, 41 cents right now? If they were to dump those other 50 million tomorrow into the marketplace, that would that would literally cut the price in half. You'd be at 21 cents because the market cap would stay the same, but there's double the supply coin, so it cuts that. That price. Okay. Well, nice to hear you're a man. So, so uh, just pink paws, man. I don't know. But anyway, it's 2022. I guess it's okay. So, anyway, the way to think about it is yes, this will kind of defl uh, it'll inflate, it'll, it'll cut the price in half, right? However, Ripple's not going to operate that way, right? So, a number of things happen. They're going to put coins in at a certain time every month. People, if people start buying that coin, or if they create more use cases and people want to own that coin, then that drives the price up. And then it, then, then it doesn't matter. So at the end of the day, worst case scenario, yes, it'll cut the price in half. But that's not what they're going to do. They're going to slowly add coins into the marketplace. And they'll add, yeah, smash that like button, guys. Hit the subscribe button so you get the notification when our shows start. But that's how escrows work. Or more importantly, that's why you should always, always, always look at the max coin supply. If it's unlimited, like Ethereum is. Somebody said Ethereum is deflationary. No, it's not. No, it's not. Ethereum can add tomorrow if, if Vitalik or whatever the hell his name is wants to come and add another billion coins to it. He can do that tomorrow. And guess what? He just cuts the Ethereum price in half. It is not deflationary. Don't tell people this. Do they have a small deflationary thing in there where they burn a little coin? Yeah, they burn a little bit, but he can add a shit ton more whenever he wants. So I hope uh, Pink Paul and anybody out there that helps answer your questions on what um, escrows mean and why it's so important to look at maximum coins make sure your coins have a total max supply then they can never be um inflated any more than 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 that number yes and we are getting some comments do i have a twitter account i run the 3t good morning crypto twitter account full time so if you're looking for me that's the best place to get access i am going to create my own twitter account and when i do that i'll bring it to you here live but i want to say thank you to johnny crypto thank you to the node defender and of course thank you showtime you guys provided some amazing information today and i look forward to doing it many more times if you're out there and you're listening and you enjoy this content, show us some love, smash that like button on your way out of here, and we'll see you guys in 23 hours. It's like we always say, Warriors, rise. Get your shit together, baby. Thank you for joining us today. Let's go. Let's go. There we go. In a month. The evolution of crypto, right? Yeah.